future turn generations. These states blue forever. It would turn the same way they've done California. It, it, exactly. And we saw this. And look, I'm, I'm like a Reagan guy, right? I'm a conservative Republican. Um, but Reagan screwed up a lot. He screwed up mental health in this country. People don't talk nearly enough about that. The amnesty that. thing, he really screwed the up. The amnesty thing, he really screwed up. Yeah. And people always say, well, you know, Ronald Reagan, you know, when, when they, critics of, of Donald Trump will say, well, look at how Reagan talked about immigration. Because of what Ronald Reagan did at the 1986 amnesty, California is now effectively a permanently blue state. California is a one-party state because and, of Ronald Reagan's amnesty. And that's the fear, is that the entire country could become one the party. The entire country becomes that. This is just wrong. Um, California is a one-party state because of liberal whites who vote roughly 55% were Democrats in presidential elections. It is also a liberal state due to the presence of blacks who voted 80 to 90 percent for Democrats in presidential elections, just using the presidential election as a sort of proxy for general political tendencies. And it's a uh, democratic state due to Silicon Valley Indians and Asians who immigrated here legally or are on F-1 visas, I guess, and, and maybe got citizenship later, who vote 70 to 75 percent for Democrats in presidential elections. Liberal whites and Hispanics are voting at roughly the same rate for Democrats. It's 55 percent to 58 percent. And Hispanics and whites are more likely to intermarry than the other groups. So they're, they're a similar people. How many people were amnestied by Reagan? Let me just get this number. Okay. Despite the passage of the act, the population of illegal immigrants rose from 5 million in 1986 to 11 million in 2013. I mean, let's say that it was 5 million. That, that would be the highest number. No, that didn't fundamentally change things. What fundamentally changed California was liberal voting whites. Now, that has something to do with people leaving the state. That has a lot to do with Silicon Valley coming into California and being a, a target for Asians, et cetera. But that's what happened. It wasn't, it, it's like they, they want to focus on the one thing that they can sort of solve without doing much work at it. So it's like amnesty. We'll never do an amnesty. That's so terrible. While, you know, I, I, who cares if we did an amnesty back in 2003 or whenever George Bush was promoting it and we changed the immigration reform, immigration system, we would have been so much better off. Even if we'd let in 10 million, just been like, come on in. Y'all, y'all welcome here. And then we change the immigration system uh, in terms of the family reunification dynamic that has existed since 1965. We would be in so much better shape. Who cares about amnesty? Uh, I remember during when Boehner was still Speaker of the House and they the Republicans got mad at Boehner when he wasn't even offering exactly an amnesty. It was a sort of worker program and allowing all of these Mexicans to work legally in the United States without gaining citizenship and the right to vote. And they're like, oh, amnesty. I, I just it's like. I think with these people, I see this with so many racist ideologues who are Trump supporters. I mean, I, I guess I could name names here, but maybe I'll refrain. People who I've known for 15 or 20 years, and they equate the white population with the Republican Party. And the Democrats are just like, Hispanics and blacks or something. And so we can't win due to demographics. It, it's just not correct. And you point this out to, I don't know, I'm just thinking of Kevin Deanna, but you could say this about all of them, like Peter Bremelo, Jared Taylor. You, you point out facts to them and it just doesn't matter because they're so wedded to the GOP 
as a principle, as a guiding principle, but they're also just so wedded to this ideolo- ideology, or, or it's not even an ideology, it's like a talking point about how the GOP is the white party. So Donald Trump won a smaller percentage of the white vote than Mitt Romney did in 2012. In, 20, in 2016, Donald Trump won a smaller percentage of the white vote. It's a slightly smaller percentage of the white vote than he did in 2012. And he increased among blacks and Hispanics. Donald Trump, the greatest irony about him is that he's weirdly bringing the people he demeans into the party. So after Mitt Romney, the GOP convinced itself that it was already too white and that they need to reach out to new immigrants and Indians and Hispanics and so and so and they're going to call it the Grand Opportunity Party and blah, blah, blah. They had this autopsy of the 2012 election that was published. And then all of that was thrown out the window. To by Donald Trump. The greatest irony is that Donald Trump fulfilled the objective of the 2012 autopsy. He brought in more Hispanics to the party, and he will continue to do that. Meanwhile, more and more suburban white professionals are fleeing the GOP and going to the Democrats. So, it's if you want to think about it like, oh, you know, the GOP is the party of like wealth and civilization and being functional and intelligent, high IQ or whatever. You should become a Democrat <laughs> because that's where those people are going overwhelmingly. California is now liberal in large part due to Silicon Valley, due to bringing in non-Hispanic immigrants that is Indians and Asians, and bringing in whites who are enamored with a sort of techie liberal ideology. That is why it is liberal. Hispanics vote for the Democrats at a slightly higher rate than whites do. Now, maybe you could say they're not helping the matter. Okay, fair enough. But it's actually not the decisive fact. And if anyone can bring like Hispanics into the GOP, it's Trumpism. So these people who just the, 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 the sort of like mainstream white nationalist people who kind of present themselves as like really politically savvy and operatives and whatever, they say the same thing over and over and over again. And they actually never adjust to empirical reality. And again, I don't know how many times I have told this to, I mean, I haven't talked to these guys in a, a number of years now because I'm just like out. I don't want to talk to them. I have told this to Peter Brimelow, Jared Taylor, Kevin Deanna, all of these. I've said this to them to their face and they do not get it. They don't respond. They don't have a rejoinder. They're just like, oh, oh, I can't think that way because I I have this meme in my mind that the GOP equals the white race. I don't know. It's just, I've been saying this for so many years to these people and I've just stopped talking to them because they don't listen to reason. They have no interest in listening to reason because all of their incentive is, you know, like with with Kevin Deanna, who's what is his pen name? Gregory Hood, or what is it, their their entire career is like writing slop content for racist Republicans in the South who want to hear this. Oh, but we're, if it were just if it were just us whites, you know, like there wouldn't be any question about it. Just be all Republican like it is here in Alabama. Surely, if we write one more article about some Negroes raping a white girl that will change the tide in this country yeah exactly the crimson tide if you will (laughs) um the other thing about it is like let's say that the immigration act never happened i don't think we would have someone like donald trump running for office like donald trump is such a product of 
the racial decline in the United States, you know? It, he's 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 a absurd carnival barker celebrity apprentice candidate that seems to just be like birthed from the loins of this like degraded hispanicized america <laughs> like that's why you have donald trump is because of these things that you whine about i don't know i just find the delusional crime pills you can jump in yeah you sort of had that banger tweet that you put out i, I think this morning um kind of talking about this and i've sort of discussed this with other people and they don't really these these kind of MAGA tards, conservatives, they don't really understand what we're going through or go going for, I think, because it's not like and like, don't get me wrong if this is not your actual position. It's not like you really like illegal immigration, like it's the greatest gift, you know, right, to this right. nation. It's that when you focus in on illegal immigration, the way you frame this is sort of as a like a legalist civic nationalist kind of lens where you know identity comes through through the state and it's sort of this arbitrary thing that can be granted to anybody and i i think that any time at i mean i i've sort of you know since since i've kind of heard you talk about this you know earlier this year or, or last year it's, it's been a while but i i've sort of had this opinion that if you even say the word illegal immigration, you are just further cementing this view of of our identity as somehow being tied to, you know, just tied to the arbitrary like whims of the state when when it, obviously identity is much deeper than that. And so I think it it does a disservice to ever even talk about illegal immigration. Because it just yeah. it just, you know, furthers that point. And so in order to kind of get around that, you you have to push super hard on legal immigration to to get these people to start thinking, well, what what really, you know, you know, what really makes somebody an American? What really makes somebody a German or a, an Englishman? It has nothing to do with the content of your passport or your immigration papers it has everything to do with your heritage, with your connection to the founding of this country, to, to all of that. And yes, it's, it's just, I, I am so sick of people. Um, and it, it does kind of, you know, tick me off, but I'm sick of people when they like reply to you or respond to me, you know, if I ever bring this up, where they're like, well, oh, you must like these illegal Venezuelan gangs or, or something like that. It's like, no, you you just you're just pushing everything back and you're just you're playing into the game that they want you to play into this sort of yeah. civic nationalist garbage that we've been fed for the last 60 years in, in the right. It's just it's yeah. just it's not radical. It's it's not going to change anything. And it's just more of the same. It's kind of like conservatives are just like liberal they, they'll, they'll even brag they'll say that we're liberals driving the speed limit we want to be really cautious and we want to we just want to do everything the liberals do but do it 20 years uh later yeah, and, and like look the notion that hispanics are coming here to like you know they're just coming here to we're, we're in an occupied zone now hispanics are taking over or whatever no, actually, I think they're coming here to be roofers. You know, like, let, let's get real here. They come and they go. There's uh, there's immigration uh, back across the border. Also, by the way, there's they're, they're sending money as well. They they come. They work. They work in a kitchen. They bust tables. They mow lawns. They lay cement. They do roofing et cetera, et cetera. And some of them are rapists and, and gang members and whatever. And that's a crime issue. We don't need to even like, <laughs> yeah, of course we should arrest like drug traffickers or whatever. I mean, yes, obviously I am in favor of that. I just, you don't need to say that. The fact is there, most of the illegals are coming here to do these jobs that, that often are pretty crappy. And, I I get it. Like I I think that in a better world we could we could you know 
find young people or poor people who are Americans to do those jobs. I get it. I, I really do. But to like over exaggerate the power of Hispanics is just ridiculous. You know, and, you know, the real issue is legal immigrants who are actually fairly intelligent, like the 110 to 115 H-1B visa guy is so much more of a threat to the future than some like Jose, who's like desperately trying to sell you a taco. He's just illegally trying to give you a delightful lunch. <laughs> you know, like that's what he's doing. He's not here because he's like a political revolutionary or wants to become the new ruling class or is like a maniac criminal. He's try he's here to make a buck and he probably likes it and his cousins here. That's why he's here. And it's it's a totally understandable reason and it's a kind of forgivable reason. And yes, we should of course deal with that, but like it it's not the issue. The issue is your son or daughter competing with some like Indian who cheats and who's in engaged in nepotism that is antagonistic towards you in order to get into college, in order to work in Silicon Valley or become a doctor or a nurse or, or, or whatever. That's the fucking issue. And oh, those people are legal. So you see these people like Vivek Ramaswamy who they are going to scapegoat Mexicans in order to promote their own kind. So they're going to be like, oh, yeah, they, you know, my parents did it the right way. They, they wanted to be. Yeah, your parents were no doubt a bunch of swindlers, you know, endemically, and they came here to make money, and now you're here, and you run a fraudulent and in my humble opinion criminal uh stock market scheme to promote a uh senility drug that busts up and you make a lot of money on other people's money and other people lose a lot of money and now you're running for president congratulations vivek you strike me as a con artist that's the w term I would use to describe you, Vivek Ramaswamy. You are a con artist, in my humble opinion. And I much prefer Jose, actually. I much prefer Jose, who is going to make me a fun taco, who attend your, attends Dodgers games regularly and cheers on his favorite team, who's kind of fun, if we're honest about it. Particularly when the comparison is Vivek Ramaswamy and people like that who are gross nerds. So like the, you're always making choices whenever you like advance things. You can't have it all. So it's like if you're focusing on illegals, you're basically justifying and glorifying legal immigrants. That is wrong. We should be demonizing legal immigrants and forgiving or kind of looking the other way at illegals. And when all these conservatives are fawning over someone as just fraudulent as Vivek Ramaswamy, you are uh, um, unnecessarily and undeservingly demonizing some guy who, like, is working for $12 an hour roofing. You know, like, is he the enemy, really? He He's the problem? I mean, I, again, I'm, I'm sympathetic towards the idea of, like, getting Amer Native Americans to do this. I, I totally get it. But, like, it, when you see that guy building a house or, like, working at a taco stand, are you like, wow, he's... He the enemy of civilization is before me. <laughs> the guy in the Dodgers cap uh, listening to, to brass band, <laughs> whatever, like Latino 
Pratt's music on like a, a jam box in the hot sun. Yeah. Oh, he's 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 the enemy. He's he's the greatest danger to America. Give me a fucking break. Vivek Ramaswamy is your fucking enemy. People like him, the little test takers, the little swindlers, the con artists, they are the ones who are going to get into they're going to get into the good undergraduate schools over your children. So he's the fucking enemy. And Jose is kind of cool and fun. And Vivek is gross. So it's it's just on like purely aesthetic grounds. It's not even a question. And Jose is probably complacent in his lot in life and isn't envious and doesn't right. have any resentment, you know, so there's that too, you know, and well, I think so Vivek, doesn't his, his mutual fund is like that to me, that just seems like a very clever way of funneling money uh, to like certain organizations and stuff, which is, I'm, I mean, I'm sure that's what it's for, you know? So yeah, he's just, everything he touches is just such a, a terrible scheme. Um, But the, uh, to talk about the uh, point that uh, with uh, going back to Vance, you know, he uh, th it's funny because he only mentions parties. Everything is like a party to him where it just goes to show that he doesn't really care about policies too much. It's, yeah. you know, because at the end of the day, ultimately, that's what matters. And whenever people talk about Texas going blue, um, it's as long as everything is relative in politics. So as, as long as Texas is the least liberal of all the states, it's going to remain Republican because obviously Republicans will adapt and just simply adopt different policies from the left in order to compete in politics. So it's kind of like, a, it's kind of an arbitrary, stupid way of looking at things to say, California went blue and now Texas will go blue. It's like, no, California will always be blue because it's the most liberal. So it's the furthest to the left. So wherever, yeah, it's the most progressive wherever. state. Right. And, you know, Gavin Newsom isn't wrong when he says like w w it happens first in California or he he has like a, a line like that. Like it actually is progressive and innovative in the sense of people follow them for better and for worse. There's a, like I'm not justifying, you know, it's the first and the first in silicon and the first in transgender surgery. I mean, I'm not equating those two things, but the fact is, it actually is a progressive hotbed, and it doesn't surprise me that it's left wing. And all this talk about legal immigration is not, um, it's not something that's like petty on their part. It's, it's, it is well thought out and it, it's definitely lobbied. There's like the, the market right now is saturated uh, across the board for all professional careers. So, you know, kids coming out of college are having a very hard time finding work even if they have a STEM degree or something similar. And it's the only reason they're bringing in uh, foreign workers and foreign professionals is to simply drive down wages. It's not to fill positions that need to be filled. And that's kind of the, the sick thing is that they're, they're trying to make it sound like we need them. Like, like we need, because we're, you know, Silicon Valley is exploding and there's just so many jobs. We can't fill them. There's not enough software engineers or something. So we need to Silicon hire. Silicon Valley is contracting. It's, yeah, and all and of these all of these off. companies are like, yeah, there we you hear this of like layoffs and there's going to be a bubble, an AI bubble crash in the next two years. I mean, give me a break. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, it's entirely about driving down wages. It's it's not about like there's this massive explosion and we just need more and more people. Also, I, I mean, I, I, what's your thoughts on this, Richard? Because I've been kind of, you know, seeing people always hit on the crime issue as if that's like the biggest deal, as if we're like these little like nanny hall monitors. Like the reason I don't want certain people in my country or immigrating to my country has nothing to do with the rate of crime. That sort of is a distraction from the real issue. The real issue is that they're, they're not my people and this is not their country.